This is the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian on Museum Hill in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This museum was founded in 1937 by Boston anthropologist Mary Cabot Wheelwright and Hastin Claw, a Navajo medicine man and singer. Wheelwright had been a devoted Victorian daughter for decades before deciding to leave that world behind and move to the Four Corners region during the 20s, where she met Claw on the Navajo reservation. They both had an interest in recording and preserving Navajo stories, rituals, and artwork, and decided that a museum was necessary to do this. The museum was originally known as the Navajo House of Prayer, and went through a few changes before the Navajo Nation exerted independence during the 60s, and this museum gave much of their collection back. So the museum has changed quite a bit since it opened, and it now holds changing exhibitions on traditional and contemporary Native American art. The building was designed like a big Hogan, a traditional Navajo home. They have a pretty unique exhibition on right now called Laughter and Resilience, Humor in Native American Art. Humor has always been a devalued aspect of art, especially when it comes to Native American works, so this is perhaps the first exhibit ever devoted to the subject. Some of the characters on show here are takes on popular American cartoons. There's Spongebob with a headdress. There's a pair of Mickey Mouses apparently in white people garb. I wonder if this is some kind of critique of the historically stereotypical portrayals of Native Americans in Disney movies. That one shows Spy vs. Spy from the old Mad magazines. Some of these poke fun at Native Americans and non-natives, but some of these also combat stereotypes of Native Americans, and some of them also comment on tribal politics and critique national politics. There's Frisch's Big Boy and Darth Vader. This is a Manifest Destiny slot machine by Tom Ferris, which says on it, settle the country by any means necessary. All the scenes on the slot reel feature methods by which whites took these western lands from Native Americans, including treaties and bibles. And the coins below show the profit of the white man. This is a Native American take on the Last Supper, with the bison apparently taking the place of Jesus, perhaps facing an imminent demise. That is a Parrot Girl storage jar made at Santa Clara Pueblo in 2018. This is a big fancy display on Southwestern Native American jewelry and silver. Jewelry has always been a major craft of Southwestern Pueblos and is some of the most impressive jewelry in the world. In my opinion, particularly due to the use of turquoise. The craft of silversmithing only arrived in the Pueblos around the 1920s and 30s, and that has significantly transformed the items they produce, such as spoons, for instance. Santo Domingo Pueblo is known for their jewelry, and while the turquoise mines ended up under the control of American companies by the 30s, their access to Route 66 and the Santa Fe Railroad gained them access to other resources, and they began their own version of folk art jewelry, called Thunderbird Jewelry. These pieces were crafted from materials gathered in salvage yards, dime stores, and the open rangelands and sold to tourists throughout the state, especially during the 30s and 40s. This is some modern jewelry made at Zuni Pueblo. These are some silver bell buckles, some decorated with turquoise and other materials. These were made by some women master jewelers. Some early silversmiths began to travel and sell their craft. Some even traveled with Barnum and Bailey Circus in the early 20th century. This was Manuel Naranjo's workbench. He worked at an Indian trading post during the Depression making jewelry on this workbench. Many celebrities such as Bob Hope, Ed Sullivan, and John Wayne watched him work at this desk. Here are some silver bridles. These are some Zuni carvings. They often make theirs in the shapes of animals, though I'm not sure what this one's supposed to be.
This is some Zuni jewelry. And here are some more big belts. There's a tiny contemporary art gallery filled with artwork and dialogue. This scene depicts a rain dance performed to invoke rainfall. This is the Case Trading Post, a working replica of a turn of the century Indian trading post made of materials from a real one that no longer exists. These trading posts were very common throughout the Southwest and other areas of the country. While they were often owned by whites, they were where Native Americans sold and exchanged their crafts and other necessities. Some of these still exist and are in operation throughout the country, including several classics on Route 66, and there's a wood-carved Native American, often a common roadside site at these posts. So that was the Wheelwright Museum. While it was a lot smaller than I expected, it still has some good displays on Native American artwork and culture. Please check out my other Santa Fe videos, and thanks for watching.